All right, good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for joining us, uh, the OE Expo, and those of you joining us online. Our next presentation is on IT governance. And uh, after the presentation, there'll be a chance to ask questions. And if we need to end, then the team will stick around for an additional half an hour to answer your questions out in the lobby. Uh, and if you need to leave before you get a chance to ask the questions, make sure you write it down and put it in the box at the back of the room, and we'll make sure that we get your questions answered. And with that, I'll introduce Liz Marsh, who will tell you about IT governance. Thank you. Hey, everyone. Thanks for being here. We uh, know we're sort of the end of the day. We feel like we're the OE Expo caboose. So thanks for you know sticking around long enough to hear our presentation about IT governance. Um, so the team is really excited right now because this week, earlier this week, we finally got our charter completed and submitted to the OE program office. Um, so our project is officially kicked off as of this week. Um, and speaking of the project team, uh, we've got a team of four besides myself. We've got Wendy Jones, who will be talking a little bit later, Russ Conacher, Marlita Khan, and I think in the audience, although it's really, it's hard to see any of you out there, I think we've got a couple of our steering committee members. We've got uh, Paul Wright here, and I think Lyle Nevels was supposed to be here, but I can't, oh. Oh, there you are, I, I really, it's really hard to see you guys out there. Anyway, so um, I think we've got a really great team uh, to work on the IT governance project, so we're, we're excited we're gonna be kicking it off now. So um, I think many of you may be asking, what is IT governance? And that's a question that, as we've been talking with the campus population at large, a, a little bit of co uh, conversations we've been having, We've been asking them because we want to know what you are thinking it means. And we've gotten some interesting answers, actually. You know, we've heard, oh, it's about decision rights, it's about priority setting, it's about controlling funding, about accountability. We've even heard it's the evil empire. And I think, you know, with the exception of maybe that last assessment, it, it, those, all of those things are true. It's, it's, uh, it is all of those things. Um, one of the t things the team has been trying to do is come up with a sort of short, pithy statement about what is IT governance. And so what we've come to is uh, IT governance is clarifying input and decision rights and defining accountability to align IT with campus strategic goals. So, okay, what does that mean? Well, I'm going to pause that question and we'll be talking about that a little uh, further on in the presentation. And, but first I want to get to what I think is another question that many of you may have, which is um, why IT governance and why now? So I think uh, the environment that we're all operating in right now has uh, a number of different drivers that are sort of leading us to the need for IT governance. On the technology side of things, um, you know, we've really moved into a, a world, a new world of technology where uh, there's, it's changing so rapidly. There's a plethora of choices, you know, and devices that people can choose from. Um, technology's become more of a do-it-yourself option, you know, people can go and choose what they want and acquire it and even set it up and start using it in a way without IT professional support that's, that's um, different than it has been, you know, in the past. I think the distinction between personal and work technology is, you know, the distinction is blurring if not become completely irrelevant. Sorry if I'm fading out with my voice here. Um, uh, so I think, you know, all of this, this ability, I mean, this demo what Shell, I think, you know, the CIO has called the democratization of technology, it's great, but it also presents some challenges around, um, you know, with this, this amazing amount of choice, what that creates, starts to create is complexity around integration and interoperability, and with complexity usually comes cost. So I think there's, you know, the, there, that's one of the drivers in our world right now. And then uh, another driver is about, uh, you know, the thing we all know is sort of why we're here right now is, is the financial situation we UC Berkeley are in and the world is in in general. Um, so this confluence of forces is really creating a need for us to rethink the way we do business, in particular how we use and support the use of technology. Um, we're trying to reduce administrative cost and complexity and really get ourselves to a more effective and operating environment. Um, and I think uh, we've looked at a number of, sort of created actually a number of ways for us to, to help us get there. When you look at what we're doing system-wide with the Working Smarter Initiative and when you know, we look at you know, the reason we're all here, the Operational Excellence Initiative, 
I think um, these are some of the, the mechanisms we're putting in place to deal with the, these drivers. And I think um, both of these initiatives have identified that the use of technology will be a key enabler to getting us to a more effective and efficient use, uh, well, a more effective and efficient operating environment for our campus. Um, and one of the ways that we can use technology is uh, effectively is to actually be more intentional about how we use it. And the, one of the ways to do that is through IT governance, which is really um, articulating input and decision rights and an accountability framework for optimizing the alignment of, of the use of IT with the goals that we, for, as a campus, have set for ourselves. So where are we now on the UC Berkeley campus with IT governance? Today we don't have anything that uh, I think we would call a structure or a formalized framework, a governance framework. Um, we've got some sort of governance happening in a variety of different places in a variety of different ways around campus, um, around you know, technology standards, in some cases around project uh, governance, and in some places even around funding decisions. But, uh, and in some cases, those things are working really well. Actually, I can think of a couple of examples off the top of my head where governance is in place and, and operating effectively or is on the path to operating effectively. One of those is the, uh, the IDC, the, data, the, the Institutional Data Council, which is a form of governance around the use of data. One of them is uh, the work that the Student Affairs Organization is doing right now to put in place an IT Governance Council to really look at how to use IT more strategically within their control unit. So it's, it's working well, or on the path to working well in a couple of places. I think in some other areas it's perhaps not as effective as it could be, and I think there are other areas even where there's just gaps uh, for, you know, there's ways of using IT or decisions about IT where we just have no guidance as a campus. and so. People are just kind of doing their own thing, um, you know, and maybe would like guidance, but it isn't there to be had. So um, I think there, all of this is to say that I think while we do have some governance, there's definitely opportunity for us to do it in a more aligned and strategic way. So when we, when we talk about um, what the future state looks like, where are we trying to go with IT governance? One of the things that we want to make sure people understand is that where it's working well now, I mean, what we want to do is try to use that and incorporate it into a, a model. We're not trying to just throw the baby out with the bathwater in this situation. And Wendy will be talking a little bit more about how we plan to do that. But I think overall we're trying to put in place a structure, a set of bodies and a structure that helps us align our use of IT with our strategic priorities that clearly articulates where it dis where, what and where decision and input rights live and for various IT related things. And when I say IT decisions, so sometimes that, that can be confusing I think to people because it doesn't just mean IT decisions like what kind of computers should we buy or you know, what kind of network should we have. It means how we use IT to enable things like an enterprise campus uh, you know, financial system or you know, CalTime or things like that. It's how we as a campus are using technology to get us where we want to be, to put in place the solutions we, we want to see and you know, improve our business processes. Um, so another sort of goal of ours is to have the appropriate campus-wide representation in whatever uh, governance bodies we, we create. We want to be transparent about you know, who gets to make the decision, why they're making the decision, what, what the decision is, and who's making it and why. And underlying it all, we want to make sure that moving forward, once we've uh, proposed a framework and had it approved, hopefully by the OE Executive Committee, that the, the model is appropriately resourced so that we can um, be successful both you know, in the implementation as well as moving forward as we need to evolve it. Because IT governance isn't something that you, know, you sort of build the house and you plop it down and it's done. It's it, as something that is meant to enable campus and, or an organization, campus in this case, to uh, achieve strategic priorities. As those priorities change, sort of the governance model may change and need to be you know, looked at over time and revamped as necessary. So how are we going to get there? How are we going to reach this IT governance nirvana, you ask? Well, I'm going to turn it over now to Wendy Jones to talk a little bit more about the project specifically and how we are going to get there.
Okay, so hopefully the context that Liz just provided um, is helping you get a little bit of a better understanding of what the project's about. But right now I'm gonna talk about the specific approach that we're planning on taking. So this is gonna be a two-phase uh, project. The first phase focusing on analysis and design, and we expect that to take about six months. Um, the project offic officially kicks off this month, so that means that we expect to make a recommendation and ask for approval on uh, moving forward on implementation sometime in the fall of this year. The implementation phase will also follow the OE program protocol in that we're gonna um, probably be doing a second charter at that time using the outputs of the analysis and design phase um, to define basically the scope and the resources and the timeline for the implementation phase going forward. So as we focus on analysis and design for the next six months, we're really gonna be co um, combining uh, three approaches. The first area of focus, which hopefully will be an obvious one, is that we're gonna take a look at the current state at Berkeley. So um, this includes really stepping back and looking at uh, campus-wide stakeholders, the functional domains, the IT domains, um, who, who has primary roles in um, both input and decision rights around IT, what committees exist, um, what are they doing, what are their areas of responsibility. And some of this information is readily available and it's apparent, kind of um, going back to what Liz is saying, there's a lot of really good work that's happening. Um, and so in those cases, we're just really looking at checking assumptions and aligning it with the bigger landscape. But other areas, we're really gonna have to do a deeper dive and kind of understand, um, try to figure out what is going on, what is the current situation. And so as a next step, what this is gonna require, um, what we're leading into is really what is gonna be our outreach strategy and most likely that's gonna involve talking with um, many of you in the process. So by focusing specifically on our current context, we really hope to get a better understanding, a high level understanding of what's at, pl what's at play specifically at Berkeley right now. A second and maybe less obvious approach that we're gonna be taking is um, we're gonna be looking really closely at the work of Weil and Ross Peter Weil and Jean Ross are research scientists at MIT, and they've worked extensively in the areas of IT governance and IT architecture. And they've drawn from their research both in for-profit institutions as well as nonprofit institutions. And they really have provided an understanding of what we should consider when we are um, trying to define an IT governance model. And they've specifically have defined a framework to help guide institutions in applying best practices uh, to the individual context that you're trying to, uh, to define. So this image behind me basically depicts an example of a decision matrix that Wall and Ross recommends as a tool. And you can see here that they've called out some areas of IT, such as IT principles, um, architecture, infrastructure, um, business application needs, and IT investments. And from their perspective, these are all areas of concern when you're thinking about IT governance. So we're gonna be leveraging the work of Wall and Ross really to ensure that we're bringing a level of credibility to the project. <clears throat> and then a third approach to our analysis uh, will be to look at other higher institutions who have either um, just begun or have already completed major initiatives in IT governance. We're gonna be selecting um, institutions that really have a similar profile to UC Berkeley. Um, so we really wanna understand from these other institutions what were their design considerations and uh, what in challenges did they, did they encounter along the way. Um, another really important thing is what, what success have they had with their IT governance model and what would they do differently if they could do it all again. So as an example, um, we haven't really had a chance, we're just launching the project right now, we haven't specifically reached out with the University of Michigan, um, but it's an example that I put on the slide because um, I think they really clearly set a goal at UC Michigan to be as transparent and, and as simple as possible in their IT governance model. And 
it's really clear that they, um, regardless, again, we don't know how effective the actual governing is, but they have succeeded in that um, goal for sure. And if you were to go out to their website, it's incredibly clear and transparent of what the committees are, what their output um, and communication and feedback mechanisms are, what's the scope of responsibility for each of the committees and how do they interrelate. Um, so I think that they've really provided a really good vision for us of what IT governance could look like. Another one, another example is UCLA. Um, I put this one on the slide because uh, they took, they undertook IT governance, I think it was probably up about two years ago now. And, um, and I think they, um, they are an example of where they actually applied the Wall and Ross framework and they um, communicated their IT governing model by using that framework. And that's an example that we have on here where they mapped input and decision rights to the governing bodies that they created. So to summarize, we're going to be combining those three approaches, taking current state, uh, current state uh, analysis, applying the Wall and Ross uh, best practices, and benchmarking other institutions. And as a result of the analysis, the project team will be making a recommendation uh, on the design of an IT governance model. And this is going to include um, this is going to include defining what are the areas of domain for various committees or councils or stewards, some which exist today, some which will be part of the recommendation, who has input and decision rights, um, what are the processes and the accountability mechanisms that, that would be in place, um, what support is needed to be effective. One of, the, you know, one of the things that we already know is some of the governing bodies, while their purpose might be applicable to the campus, um, and our needs, uh, oftentimes they're not effective because they don't have the correct support that they need. So resources haven't been committed. And really what we're trying to look at is whatever governing model that we put in place and whatever collection of high level bodies that that equals, that they have a consistent support mechanism um, so that they can all be effective um, in their roles. So, um, so yeah, so lastly, Communication, how will they communicate what the me feedback mechanisms are? And then I think Liz touched on this, is that I think we feel that we really need to define some success criteria for continuous, inter um, continuous improvement um, because this will be a changing landscape and everybody knows that um, it's not set in stone going forward. So all of this really is designed to ensure that we're going to have a more effective um, and a much more coordinated, I think that's the big, a big key, a much more coordinated IT governance model. So similar to a lot of the other OE projects that have already come before us, um, our project itself, it's going to have a, pro a governance structure. Ours is pretty simple. We're a team of four. And um, so what you see here is that our project team will be taking input from the campus community as well as an IT steering committee. Um, we're close to having the steering committee membership defined and then we'll be defining the frequency in the next six months that we meet with the steering committee. And then a final recommendation uh, will go to the executive steering committee. So that's a high level overview of the project. Uh, as Liz mentioned, I think we're all really excited to get started and we're committed to keeping everyone informed. You can visit our website on the OE, uh, the larger OE website. We currently have put our project charter out there as well as contact information. Um, and we encourage you basically to um, contact us now with any questions or concerns that you have as a result of this presentation. Uh, this is our second presentation. So we know we have a lot more uh, details to fill in as we move forward. Um, and in the near future, we're going to be putting our calendar of engagements um, on there as well as starting to ask, uh, answer frequently asked questions. So thank you. Anyone has, uh, if there are any questions here, we have a few minutes. Okay, seeing none, uh, the team will be available for the next half an hour. Um, this is actually the last presentation of the day, so you can just remain up here. Um, and to uh, answer your questions, if you have uh, to need to leave, make sure to write it down and submit it in the back of the room. Thank you so much for joining us uh, for this presentation. And again, thank, uh, join me in thanking the team. <laughs>